trade's been brisk at Drew's Warehouse in North Wales. He needs to stock up. We've sold hundreds and hundreds of items in the last two weeks. I want to make sure the stuff is rolling through. We have a production line here. We've had it for years. I find it. Gavin and Julian sort it and clean it. Mark photographs it, goes on the website, it's sold. And by that time, I've bought some more stuff in. Drew is a workaholic, full stop. If I'm out on the road, I'll check in once or twice a day. If I shout, um, is anybody missing Drew? Uh, nobody does. Enzo does. <coughs> I'm travelling with Julian this time. He's come in, been sacked and or left probably ten times. He's stuck with me and I'm stuck with him. Drew and Julian set off on a five-hour trip to Dumfries in Scotland. So, another beautiful day in Scotland, as they always seem to be. And we're off to the Baclue estate. Yep. They're heading to Drumlanig Castle, the ancestral home of the Duke of Baclue set in 90,000 acres, one of the biggest estates in the UK. And according to my paperwork, you're meeting Richard Riley. I'm the head ranger here at uh, Baclue Estates. The castle itself, they completed the build in 1698. It's got many, many treasures in there. We have a, a Rembrandt painting, lots of lovely fine artworks. The building itself has some fantastic furniture, uh, and it really is a, a must-see. But Drew doesn't have his sights on the treasures inside the house. His hunting ground is the places the public never gets to see. We've been trying for months, months, to get into this guy's place. And we've got access. What I want today is just a little bit of that old country house magic. But I have to say... He's yeah. mighty impressive. <laughs> yeah. Check that out. Yeah. That's a nice house, but we'll want to dust it. We'll want to clean it. <laughs> nice to meet me. you. This is Jules. Hi. How are you doing? How are you? Pleased to meet you. How are you doing? Welcome to Drumlandic. The Duke rarely sells to dealers outside the big auction houses. But today, Ranger Richard has the authority to sell a few select items. Is there people in the house today? Is the family there today? Uh, well, we're actually open to the public as well. The family are not in today. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to it. Shall we get the van around the back for the furniture, shall we? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just chuck the silver under the dashboard. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so lead on. Drew has convinced Richard to show him part of the Duke's legendary car collection. Can he persuade him to part with one of them? The vehicle we have in here is quite special. A vehicle like this was the first vehicle to cross the Sahara. It's a 1924 Citroen Cagrass half truck. It was in the Bewley Motor Museum, eh, but unfortunately, you know, it's starting to fall into disrepair. The tracks, because they're rubber, they started to perish. So, very, very capable vehicle. It was said at the time you could set the idle in gear, jump out the vehicle, walk up the hill, and this would follow you up the hill like a well-trained Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. What a thing. Unbelievably good condition. Everything was just totally original. Just a little gem. This is something I'd be really keen on buying. Uh... Cars like this were built in the lead-up to the Second World War and can fetch up to £30,000. It's an incredible condition. I'd like to buy it. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> There's too much history in this vehicle for the estate to let it Yeah, for sure. Don't think I could afford it. Wouldn't know what to do with it. I don't think I'd go to the shops in it. Next one. Ford Zodiac wow. Estate. God, I remember one of these in our village when I was a kid outside the old paint shop. This car has been on the estate since new and is worth around £3,000 in its current condition. I love this. This is a great-looking car, isn't it's it? fantastic. The interior, the dashboard, everything, it's just right at the end of the 60s, isn't it? Yeah. It reminds me as a kid, you know when you go on holiday and your legs are stuck to the back yeah, seat? Exactly. That's what it smells like. Yeah. And it's great, cos you could drive this now. You don't need to restore it or ruin it. No. Just, I've got to ask, can I buy this one? A 40-year-old car with one careful owner. Could this 60s classic be Drew's first purchase of the day? It's a fabulous thing. Unfortunately not, again, Drew. All these vehicles, you know, they, they hold the... Uh, OK. They're very sentimental. One day? Yeah, possibly. One day. Put my name on them. Yeah. Well, I'm here to buy, and as yet, I've not been able to find, any, find anything. It's been great wandering around looking at everything, but I need to buy stuff. I've, I've, I'm here to buy things. Drew then sees a vehicle that, this time, Richard is keen to offload. This was actually one of the first Land Rovers that we ever had in the estate. Series 3, early one. 
Short wheelbase safari. Yeah, God, it's battered to hell, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is the model that had the, the safari yeah, yeah. roof. Yeah, safari. the roof. Keep you nice it's and cool in our balmy heat that we have here, you know? Too far gone for me. Too far gone? The earlier ones mm. I was looking for, really, yeah. the Series 1s, it was really... So you're not, you know, plans to fix this one? Hey, mm, I don't know. No, no, maybe not. So, where's next? Cool. So what's, what's this place? This is Morton Mildrew. It's a mill for processing grains, you know, wheat, mm. uh, barley, oats, basically. What do you use it for now? Uh, it's just used for storage. Much to your delight. Yeah. Drew can't afford to leave with an empty van, so he dives straight in. Finding stuff he wants is no problem, but finding stuff that's for sale is. Fortunately, these benches, uh, they're not a goer. The fuse are, are they? Uh, unfortunately, not again. Drew's frustration levels are rising. Then, Richard pulls out several tempting items. Here, eggs, original. Uh, they would have come out of the stable yard at the castle itself. Yeah, they're quite nice, aren't they? Yeah. They would actually have been made by the blacksmiths on the estate. Yeah, they're estate made, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. In Drew's world, provenance is everything. The fact that they were made on the estate could double the value of the hay racks. They could fetch as much as £150 each. That's cool. It's a nice uh, saddle horse. There's, a, there's another one, another yeah. one here. So you've been using this for display, have you? Yeah, it was, it was used for the display of saddles up at the, the stable yard at the castle itself. Fab. Drew currently has a similar Regency saddle horse for sale on his website for £580. Great. It looks like Drew may have struck gold and found the big country house pieces he's looking for. Stand it. Yeah, that's fab. I've never seen any of this size before. They look like, you know, sort of just like a plate rack yeah. for drying, for drying plate, just on a huge scale. Just a good-looking period piece as well. They're in nice, untouched condition. You can see traces of original paint all over them and the wear there where things have been slid in and out constantly. These could bring in a £1,000 for the pair on the retail market. This is the place I wanted to get to all day. This is great. There's loads of stuff. There's a lot. You just walked in straight away and said, you can't have that, you can't have that, you can't have that, you can't have that. But then to dig out these... It's now up to the Duke. Do you want to make a phone call, see if, the, see if we can have a... Yeah, I can do. I'll go and... If we could buy them. I'll go and make a call. I'm hoping Richard comes back with good news and that we can do a deal on this sort of stuff. I'd be so happy if I could walk away with the large racks and the saddle horses. Ah, Richard, what did he say? Do. We can't do the saddle racks. <sighs> right, OK. But we can do the... The plate racks the plate up. Plate racks up, OK. Yeah. OK, okay so how, how much are these, Richard? Uh, we're looking at about £75 each, so... It's too much. Too much? Yeah, it's too much. Um, um, 120 for the three. 120 for the three? That's it, yeah. I just couldn't just push it that wee bit more. 130, the three? Yeah, sure. OK, lovely. Nice. Excellent. OK, so we've bought some stuff. That's great. So what, what do you want for these? Uh, probably looking about 300 quid for those, um, I would say. Can you do a little bit better? Knock a little bit off, maybe? Take it maybe 270? Yeah, that's fine. That do? Yeah, I don't want to beat you up at all on these. Yeah. These are great. I'm really happy with them, I particularly mean, this one. You know, somebody renovating a country house, you know, that's got to look... Yeah, definitely. It's got such a great look about it. Yeah. Really has. Nice one. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Buying some stuff. Excellent. I think both myself and Drew are happy with the deals we have done today. I'm certainly happy, you know, and I think Drew's happy. I don't think I've made him pay more than he needed to. It's a real right. privilege, and uh, you've got my number. I have. Give me a call. It's so good to get in here and to buy stuff, get a good connection, find something I can sell at a profit. I've got somebody in mind for the plate racks, and I'm not going to have them long. So, yeah, really, really pleased. Another five-hour drive later, and Drew and Julian arrive back at headquarters in Wales. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. hi. It's nice to be back. It, Scotland was really good. Uh, we bought some great stuff. I thought they were quite good. And do you know what I think they could be? Console tables. When they're excited and when I bring something off the van, it just sort of goes, yeah, great, did that right, next one. With an empty van to fill, it's not long before it's time to hit the road again. This time, Drew's taking Restorer Gavin with him. See those bench ends there, Gav, right next to you? Are they, can they be used or not? Uh. 
Gavin is restoration, sales, lifting, shifting, delivering, and he's coming on the road with me today. They're on their way to Coventry, to a narrowboat builder and restorer called Pete Gilbert. It's not the boats they're going to see, but his scrapyard that's been built up over three generations. Any chance I got to roam around scrapyards when I was a kid, I was there. And nothing's changed. I'm now 40 and I'm still doing it. Uh, but now at least I get to make some money out of it as well. And it's a proper old school scrapyard. It's the sort of scrapyard I dream about. It's a canal workshop. He lives in a canal boat in the middle of a scrapyard. It's like my dream place to go. Must be close. It's around here somewhere. Is that it over there? Yeah, this is it. Just turn down here on the right. That's the place. Looks like the place. Oh, hello, fella. Hello, mate. Yeah, Peter. Right. Yeah. Drew. All right. How are you? Cheers. This nice is Gav. Nice to meet you. How are you? Hi, Gav. You OK? Yeah. Hello. Wow. You have got the best place in the whole world. Pete's place to me is just like heaven. I think I'm probably like one chromosome away from, from doing this, but I'm not far off. I could easily end up like this. You know, left on my own devices, this could happen. It's from my great granddad, my dad, and me. We've got old engines and stuff and bits and bobs. It just gets better. You see why I'm happy? Come on. Oh, you go. <laughs> He's a handsome devil, isn't he? That's it. This takes me back to being a kid and rooting through junkyards. You just don't think places like this exist anymore. My great granddad, he built this place. He was a boatman. The yard covers around an acre, so Drew's going to have his work cut out to see all that Pete has to offer. I do need to spend two weeks here. I need to hire a canal boat and stay here for a couple of weeks. There's so much stuff. Every time I turn around, I'm trying to find something else. All I wanted when I was a kid was a scrapyard. Well, yeah, that's it. Well, I had one. You've got one. <laughs> I'm really enjoying my day here with Peter, but it really is now to time to start buying. Drew spots something he's seen before and dives straight in with a request. This little chap here, who I'd really like a lot. I've owned one before. It sold very, very quickly, and it sold well. I was surprised to find that, and I definitely want to be taking that home with me. This mid-century whippet is very collectible and can sell for around £200. Nice, lovely. It's so out of context here where it is. Brought in somewhere else, that's really going to shine. Obviously, without the collar. <laughs> but is, this, is this something we could, I, you, could have, you, I could have a go at? You've got to uh, have a word with the, the wife about that. She's, okay. uh, she's in charge of that one. He has to talk to... Uh, uh, senior management, and uh, we'll see how we go. He's worth a few quid to me, so... She wants some money, so I'll try and tell her that's the only way to get it. <laughs> Sell it to Drew. Drew will need a strategy to get reluctant Pete to start parting with anything. I think for the first thing I'm going to try and buy off him, I'm going to go for something that he is less interested in. You got any more of them? Uh... Before we go back to the pinks I really want. Yeah, these are good. They interested me when I seen them. Fantastic. Good, yeah. aren't they? These yeah. are the enamel factory yeah, pendants. That's it. Yeah. And they're 1950s sort of factory lights, and um, I love them. We're always buying and selling them. Do you know the top section for these? The yeah. Cut? Not all of them, I don't think. They were just built for an industrial purpose, but they translate very, very well into using them in residential and interior design projects. They're always beaten up, but that's part of their charm, yeah. all the rust and everything on them. We can restore them and have them rewired in-house a couple of days. Oh, there's the top for those lamps, yeah? Yeah, that's it. I should go over and twist and go. Mm. There you go. Well, that's it. If we could have found... I'd rather buy six than three. What sort of price can we do on these? Think... You would have to uh, shout me what you'd want to give for them. The shape's great. It's stylish and everybody wants these. They're things I can sell. Industrial lamps are popular with interior designers, and once restored, coolicons like these can fetch around £175 each. Well, if we said... for the three large ones... £75? Um. Uh, yeah, yeah, go on. Sure? Yeah, yeah, go on. The 
these three here, 30, 10 pounds a piece. Yeah. That's a bit mean, 15. 15 on, pounds a piece for those. That's, yeah, about, that's, yeah. that's fairer. So 45, 75. Yeah. Yeah? First purchase, money changing hands. Great. Always makes it a little bit easier for me. And it just relaxes everything and, you know, oils the wheels. I think that we used as a heat lamp for the chickens. Drew is always on the lookout for the unique, and he spots something that definitely fits the bill. These are fantastic. They're either been made by somebody at an art college or something like that. I think they're Roman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's something about them I like. Is that the top? Is that like stoppers? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Really weird looking. No chips, nothing missing. They're great. But once again, Peter's reluctant to strike a deal and defers to a higher authority. It's Where are they from? The missus is... I can't find any marks or anything. somewhere. I'll phone her up and see what they're all ring? about, yeah. You know these pots you've got in that blue tub? What, what are they? You know, they're mud-shaped things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Weird it. Things. These are for sale, then. What about £80? No, no, you decide for Yeah. Uh, yeah, she'd be happy with that. That's all right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, keep her okay. happy. OK, yeah, we'll take those. With a couple of purchases under his belt, Drew is happy, but he's not ready to leave just yet. It'd be worth trying her on the dog again, because the dog... The dog is worth 100 quid to me. Yeah. I'm really hoping we can buy that dog statue. That's the thing, it's sort of bothering me, cos, like, I know I can sell it like that, really want it. And it seems that Pete has saved the best till last. You like this one? Oh, wow. Fantastic. Just as we were leaving, I was just about to leave, and I said, oh, what's that in there? Is this an original Tora? Yeah, it is. It's a proper one. Not a conversion. It's not a, not a cut-down one. My first car was a Morris 1000. I think my second car was a Morris 1000. I've owned, I can't remember how many, at least 10. So, 66? Uh, I think, yeah, B66, yeah. My mum had a Morris 1000 convertible. I think it was the same colour, or pale blue. Can you get it out? Oh, it all drives and everything. OK. Yeah. Massively popular car, made God knows how many of them, and uh, loads still going. Brilliant little cars. We're just going to try and see if we can get this little fella started. <laughs> Did we have it the wrong way round? Yeah. <laughs> try that. <laughs> I think I just flooded it. <laughs> Shall we try her again? Yeah, try them again. Whey! Beautiful. Tools of the trade. <laughs> Buying a car in this state is a gamble, but an enthusiast could pay from 800 to to £1,000 for a restoration project like this. What sort of money are we looking at? I don't know, I suppose it'd be, like, 800 quid. When he came up with that, I thought, should I bid him on it and sort of try and knock him down a bit? But he was really genuine. He said, look, I did pay that for it. And I, you can tell when somebody's lying. He's not lying. That's what he paid. I don't need to sort of kick his head in on it. Let's just keep the price right, give the guy's money back. It's, a, it's the right price. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. And just as they're off, Peter arrives with some good news. Hey, yeah, Drew, I've uh, had a word with the missus and she said she'd let you have that. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. All right. That's then. brilliant. Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, yeah. It's been a pleasure. It really yeah. has. I've enjoyed myself. And me. No very end. Good. <laughs> yeah. A very good day. All right then. Fantastic. Drew heads off to Morecambe with Gavin. He's heard of a company that ships huge quantities of antique furniture. It's not his usual hunting ground, but he's prepared to take a chance. I'm going to go and see this chap. Golly. Furniture's my business, and I know I haven't got that many things, you know, that he would be interested in, but I'm going to show him a couple of items. Does he normally have good stuff? It's not usually our sort of stuff. It doesn't have sort of junky stuff like we like. Everybody has their own taste, I suppose. Apparently, I rang Rebecca too late last night. I'm in a bit of trouble. When you don't ring, why didn't you ring? I'd stay out of it if I were you, if you got any sense. <laughs>
Aha, here we are. See what I mean? Big outfit, proper job. Hello, golly. Drew Pritchard, this is Gav. Gav? You OK? Hi, Gav. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, yeah. Good. So we just thought we are in the area, thought we'd call in, see what you got. I'm after the strange stuff. Right. The sort of the rusty old architectural, decorative, yeah. shot fittings, runs of lighting, that type of thing. All right, then. Um, just feel free to wander about. Find that door. Oh, that's a great place. Yeah. It's full, isn't it? <laughs> Tons of stuff. You've got some fantastic stock here, haven't you? Golly's business and what I do are very, very different. Golly sells what we call shipping furniture and uh, brown furniture to the international antiques trade. Normally, you'd be squeezing down these alleys. You, see, you just had a big order go out of you? Yeah. Well, just got six containers. Fantastic. I'll show you, these are the containers you're filling now. That's one, yeah, and there's another one that's, that's out there. There's another one there. Big business. He's been doing it longer than I've been born. It's nice to see young people. You don't see many young people now coming into this business. So how long have you been doing this, then? Started in 67. So was your father doing it? No. Really? No. no, I started off as a musician. Did you? Yeah. Really? You know, I was playing in different rock and roll bands and uh, scared to death to have to go and get a job. You know, it terrified me. Well, what else would you do if you weren't doing this, isn't it? I don't know. Um, well, nothing. <laughs> you just sit about eating and drinking. Yeah, yeah. Just getting fatter. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Golly. Um, he's just a really like, down to earth bloke. Golly's market is a different market to mine. It's a, it's a good market that he has there, and he's obviously doing a really good job. Uh, my market is, is totally different, and what I'm after is always the tatty thing in the background. Drew spots some vintage toys, which he knows are very popular with designers and window dressers. Oh, I like that, Golly. This is cool. Yeah, I've had that a long, long time. Um, little, um, oh, it's a little Vespa. It's a little Vespa, little 70s. Yeah. 70s Vespa. Is it 70s? Yeah, that's 70s, yeah. that one. Is it electric or something, is it? I don't know. I, don't know. I do home in on anything Vespa Lambretta. I always really like it, and uh, I've got a couple of Vespas in the house. I've got some old fairground ride Vespas in the house, and I think that'll be joining them, hopefully. Motorised Vespas like this are rare and popular with both toy collectors and scooter enthusiasts. They can sell for upwards of £100. What can we do on this? If you want it, Drew, I'll take 120 quid for it. Ooh. Yeah. Do you think that's dear? I do, yeah. I do. Right. I do. Well, um, um, maybe it is. Yeah. You've maybe seen more of them than, than me. Yeah, yeah. Golly has been selling for almost 50 years, and Drew's beginning to realise what he's up against. Oh, well. He's putting just the right amount of pressure in a... In a, in a in just the right, he's pushing just the right buttons to get me to buy stuff. It's very good. I do think it's a little bit on the... Yeah? ..on the uppy side, yeah. Right. Um, could you do 80 quid? Could we come back to it? Yeah, I'll let him have it, but uh, don't tell him yet. Sure. If yeah, I can tell right. you a bit more stuff. All right, let's have a look. The answer will be yes. OK, all right, let's have a look, see what else we can do. Right. I'd rather spend some more money as well. Right. Up here. I've had some bloody interesting stuff over the years. I like the little bar, that's quite funky, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. You, see, you see, that's, <laughs> that's in. great. That's, in that's now, so in. That's, I really like this, all this sort of yeah. faux plastic yeah. marble. I mean, I remember this new in the shops, this stuff. You know, but fellas like you, it's like a novelty. <laughs> Young whippersnappers like me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's so bad, it's good. Despite growing in popularity, mid 20th century furniture is still a niche market, and finding the right buyer could be difficult for Drew. Examples like these could sell for up to £200 to the right buyer. What sort of money something like this now? 120 quid. 120 quid? Maybe. I'll give it some thought. Yeah. Well, look at this. There's another one here. Another Del Boy bar. <laughs> that would have been the bee's knees, you know, in 1955. Yeah. Oh, you'd have been posh if you had that in your house, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's, a, what's, what's something like this running out there? Um, I'll take 85 quid for 85 it. 85 quid. That's, that's great, isn't it? It's a brilliant price for somebody. Mm. It really is. I don't know the market on that, so it's uh, maybe a step too far, but also I don't know if I'm going to get it on the van. So has master negotiator Drew met his match? For now, all Drew can do is be led by golly. What else have you got? Um, there's a little bit of junk outside. Just open the security system. I've got an old building. Hey, look, there's a diver's helmet there. That's a cool thing, isn't it? That's really never moved from here. Really? That's a mantique, yeah. isn't it? That's a yeah. bloke antique, that yeah. is. Definitely. Very cool. 
It's nice, yeah. isn't it? It's all right, yeah. I've never owned one. All right. I quite like it. I like that it's not polished. Looks like a sort of... Yeah. Like Darth Vader's helmet, isn't it? Yeah. What's something like that worth? I want 800 quid for it. Yeah, I suppose that's probably right. I think it could be worth more. Yeah. I think it could right. be. It's a nice thing. Yeah. US Navy diving helmets like this were manufactured between 1915 and 1980 and can go for as much as a thousand pounds. I'm always looking for stuff I need to be selling it the next day and that I'm not going to be able to sell the next day. I just don't know. I don't know on that one at all. Drew is clearly getting agitated. He has yet to make a purchase and this could turn out to be a wasted day. You don't see many of them around me. Yeah, donkey. That's a bit nice big cart. Yeah. Once again, he tries to get the ball rolling with Golly. I like that, though. That's quite good, isn't it? Ah, yeah. I like yeah. that. It's a good, nice advertising thing, that, you know, if you stick that up in a shop. Cigarette things, I like it. I like it, yeah. Metal advertising signs are popular and easy to sell. This one could fetch £80. What's the what's, what's uh, that for, Golly? 50 quid. 50. 50, 50, 50. Good nice. 40? 40 quid? Do that? Yeah, you yeah. If you it's want. all right. Yeah, what's picking out in red? That's okay. Yeah, we just leave that alone again. Yeah, give it a little bit of a polish. But forty pound, I'll take it. All right. The ball is rolling, but Golly is still calling the shots. Let's we'll see if we can do a deal on that Vespa. I haven't bought a I've lot. Got one more thing to show you. All right, let's have a look then. Cool. Drew can only follow as Golly leads him into the dark recesses of the warehouse. Bloody good chair, this Matt. Oh, hello. Yeah, it is honestly. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good looking. Thing. I'll tell you what, it's near enough perfect. Yeah, I like that a lot. I like it. That chair is just lovely. Great shape, size, colour. It's everything I like about furniture at the moment. Have you had it a long time? Mm. I've had it a very long time, yeah. You come local? Yeah. Come out of a house local. Nobody has ever asked about it. If I offered that to an American for 50 quid, he'd laugh at me. Yeah. If I offered it to a Japanese dealer for 50 quid, they'd laugh at me. They'd rather buy that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we've got the market for this. But I but... can't shift it. Yeah. No. Whereas I couldn't shift this. No. It's the two branches of the antiques business, isn't it? That's right, a strange yeah. Yeah. mix. How old is this, do you think? Golly. It's Georgian. Georgian, is it? 1810? Yeah. Somewhere around there? Yeah, about 200 year old. Yeah. An unrestored Georgian piece like this is a rare find and very attractive to interior designers and photographers. It could fetch as much as £500. What sort of money are we looking at? I'll take 200 quid for it, and it's cheap. Yeah, you are doing me a bit of a favour, to be honest with that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I've had more bid know, it years ago. No, that's very fair. Very fair. No, I'll have that. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Golly. You'll do well with it. I will. I will. That's Don't great. be in a hurry to sell it. I won't be. I'm not giving that away. No. No, very nice. A really good price on that. I'm very, very happy with it. He understands that put, putting that in the right place will achieve a nice profit on it. I think he could sell it easily for 500. Brilliant. I'm very, very happy with that. I didn't want to call in, but I have, and now it, I'm, I'm really pleased that I have done. Now the painful bit. What's, what can we do on the little Vespa then, Gully? I know I haven't spent a fortune with you. Well, there'll be another day, won't there? I'll be back. Next time you come, yeah. we might take some proper money. Take some proper money off me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down at what you offered me, 80 okay. quid. That's fine, I'll take it. Drew's chance drop-in has paid off. He's made several purchases, but more importantly, it looks like he's found a new supplier. Drew can find a home for this stuff. Well, so can I. It's Drew. If he's happy for me to come back, and he now, he now knows the sort of thing I like, and he said, you know, it's not the stuff he can sell, so that's, that's where we want to be. A couple of hours later, Drew and Gavin are back at the shop in Wales, eager to show their spoils to the waiting team. Lovely, isn't it? It's just got something about it. Just really well... Just a great-looking thing. Look, another one of those. Look at these as well. My jugs. <laughs> That's good. I, I like, like them. I like them. Look, there's, some good, nice. there's some good things in here. How cool That's is that? Brilliant. That is fantastic. Lovely. Straight inside. That's nice. What do you think of this? Hey? Yeah, I like that.
Once unloaded, the items begin their journey from junk to saleable items. I've got some hooks here. I don't know if they're the same thread. We might have to just get a little step-down adapter for them. All these need tidying up. The insides are nice. They're not bad, actually. They're not bad at all. We've got to spend a few quid on them. Ollie's got to totally rewire them. We've got to get a nice bit of industrial chain. It comes through to the photography area. It's photographed and goes straight online by Mark. Basically, just showing it off in its best light. We'll measure its size. And that's a brief description, a bit of research of how old we think it is, and then uh, we'll put it on the website as soon as it comes in. And in a few short hours, the Vespa will also be for sale. It's not a rare item by a very long way. Uh, now it's cleaned up, I don't think we're going to... I can't see myself keeping it. It's not really... Uh, the other one I've got at home is much nicer and a much earlier from the 50s. Uh, this one's a bit too late, and I think my wife will have a fit if I bring another toy Vespa into the house. Today is a big day for sales manager Mark. Watch that corner, watch that corner, watch it. It's his first trip on the road with Drew. He's found a lead that he knows Drew will like. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah, driving. But Drew is already regretting his decision to let Mark drive. You drive like an you know, old lady. <laughs> right, this side of the road, this side of the road, that's it. Gone the wrong way now, you dip. Just do 60 and don't hit anything. So where's this place where we're going? Where is it? It's in Basingstoke. OK. I think today is going to be a bit of a treat for you, Drew. Is it? I think so. Why is it full of strippers? <laughs> yeah. Why is today going to be a bit of a treat? Today we're going to see uh, Ricky Penway. My name is Ricky Kenway. Oh, I like to buy mechanical things, cars, motorbikes, clocks, things like that. He's got, like, a semi-motor museum, and he's got... Look at this. He's got an Indian. An Indian motorbike? Yes. No way. Yeah. We've reached our destination. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh, look at what he's got. Oh, he's got fabulous stuff. Hi, Ricky. Yeah. Drew. Hi, Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty sweet. Fantastic place you've got here. Mark. Hi, I started off as a mechanic and a mechanical background to just keep on fixing things. And I particularly like to have old, original things. I suppose it's like a kid in a toy shop. God, fantastic stuff here. Mark and Drew know that obsessive collectors like Ricky rarely sell their prized items, but often have stuff lying around that may be of interest. Buy these kids stuff home and you think, why on earth did I buy that? <laughs> <coughs> I know, like a fiberglass rhino's head. But it's a gamble, and they may be going back with an empty van unless Drew can work his magic. So what's in here, then? Ah, there's all sorts of treasure in there. You'll have to have a look. It's the good shed. Yeah, all the good stuff's in there. Wow. Look at that. That's incredible. When I first got it, it was a showman's engine. They respect uh, heavy haulage. So how old is this thing? So 1901 it was built, and uh, when it was new, it was used in London. When they were building the undergrounds, all the soil that was excavated was dumped with, with this, so this would pour a whole load of trailers. It's pretty damn impressive, you know, to see something like that. You will pay three to four hundred thousand pounds for something like that today. Well, I had a roller before that, and that just seemed like a natural progression to get something bigger and better and just a big boy's toy. And you take these round the fairs and stuff, do you? Or... Well, up the pubs, uh, yeah. the uh, sort of favourite <laughs> trick. Take it up yeah. the pub. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely to see blokes still making things in sheds. Old British tradition, he's keeping it up, it's great. And that, for instance, what, what age is that? That's 1896, steam car. This is what you steer it with. Yeah, so you've got left and right. Yeah. And they move, it moves further than this, but I won't yeah. push it now. And that's reverse, right. that's forward, and twist for accelerate. What's something like this worth? It's the only one, and it's, he built seven, the guy who built it. It's a man called Whitney. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's certainly a six figure sum. George Whitney was a famous inventor from Massachusetts, and his cars almost never sell on the open market. Ricky bought his from the Bewley Motor Museum. So this will probably end up in a museum, though, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, it will certainly end up in a museum. He built the steam engine himself. He's put together most of the vehicles. He does all the restoration work, all the milling, all the welding. 
It's, it's quite breathtaking to see what he's doing and the standard of the work he's doing and the restoration to the items and making new things is, is fantastic. You've got such an eclectic mix of stuff here. Yeah, I have, It's yeah. hard to sort of pin down what you just like. Some people collect 4x4s and some people collect motorbikes and some people collect steam engines and God knows what else, but he's got a steam engine and that and motorbikes and toy cars and scramble bikes and Land Rovers and it's just a really weird mix. I like nearly all of it, you know, most of it I'd happily take home. But Drew hasn't come to look at Ricky's collection. He's here to buy. Wow, absolutely fabulous thing. It's a long shot, but he's desperately keen to see whether the Indian motorbike might be for sale. That has to be the, one of the best things I've seen in years. I think it's just a thing of beauty. Work of it's art. Absolutely mate. gorgeous. Yeah. It's an Indian four as well, isn't it? This is a seriously rare beast. Yeah. Founded in 1901, the Indian Motorcycle Company was once the biggest in the world. This particular model, the Indian 4, is extremely rare and is worth at least £25,000. God, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yes. I couldn't afford it, I'm not even going to ask. Just as well, as Ricky can't even decide if it's for sale or not. I never say never, but... Uh... No, I'm quite keen to hang on to it. Yeah, well, I, I keep saying I'm going to keep this one. Can we see it going? Yeah, yeah, push it out. I'll ride really? it out for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. fantastic. I don't want to drive it. No. I do want to drive it. I'd love to ride it. <laughs> yeah. But I don't really want to ride it. <laughs> no. All I could see was me falling off the Indian and then the massive bill. That even sounds beautiful, oh. doesn't it? God, he's got all the toys, hasn't he? What do you reckon? Wow, fantastic. Can I get a photograph of me on it before we go? Yeah, yeah. Before we go? Is that all right? <laughs> Can I just get one? Can you take one on here? I know you're very enthusiastic. I am dead enthusiastic. Yeah. I feel like a little kid. A lottery win and one, there's several of these coming to Pritchard Towers. That's for sure. I think the wife might leave me, but still. Oh, well. It'd be worth At least it, you'll have an Indian. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't seen the wife yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Go on then, let's put it back in the shed. The Indian motorbike is just in a league of its own, but uh, I've got to buy things. All like that. Yeah, I thought we might find that. Yeah. <laughs> Little uh, Bibendum Michelin man to pump your tyres up. Finding something he wants to buy is not a problem, but finding something that a collector like Ricky is willing to sell is another matter. So what, what's this worth now? Um... All I'm looking to do is get my money back on that, and I'll give him four hundred pound for it. Four hundred quid. It's I can't make any money on that. Uh, well, maybe a little bit, but not not really. These are fetching good money at the moment, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And I like the vintage little toy pedal car. I thought that was great. What are you asking for this? Fifteen hundred pound for that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Pedal lot, car. It's a lot, isn't it? That, yeah. But it's nice. <laughs> I love it. But it's a, it's a pedal car. There's not a lot of profit for us to, at the end of the day, which is why we're here. It's a frustrating day for Drew and Mark. Experience has taught them that collectors are often impossible to deal with, and Ricky seems to be in that category. I quite often sell things and price them accordingly, so if, if I don't want to sell it, or I'm not too keen on selling it, then I'll price it a little higher. But Drew has dealt with this type before and has a strategy to get one object he spotted. I have to say, when I first came in, I spotted that, which I really like. A bumper car picture. Yeah. This naive painting of a bumper car dates from the 1950s or 60s and is painted in the style of one of the most prolific painters of fairground rides, Fred Fowl. Yeah, it's just a, it's a fair one, isn't it, off a, just on yeah. hardboard? Yeah. Yeah, but I do like it. Drew does this kind of usual thing where he shows absolutely no interest in it whatsoever and then towards the end, when he's befriended the customer, um, he'll make a pitch for it. I like it. It's got a great look to it. Yeah. Is that something that's for sale? Drew knows that the nostalgic subject matter and the scale of this painting will appeal to a wide audience and that it could fetch around £800. I think it'd probably be too expensive for you, to be honest. I mean, I would consider selling it, but I'd want a lot of money for it. What would you want? Oh, he's going to ask, like, £1,500, £2,000 for it, even in its hardboard, ripped, punched-out, crappy state. £500. £500. Mm. I'll give you £400 for it. Oh, well, it's tempting, isn't it? A big, big empty patch on the wall yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah. No, I like it that much. Yeah. Meet you in the middle. 
Four and a half? Four and a half. Really? Yeah. Mm. I love it. No, lovely. Super stuff. Really like it. Lovely. Great. Thing. I really like it. I don't know why I sold it to him, really, but, um... I don't know. I'll find someone else to hang out there now. The look and the expression on their face and everything about it is just so good. That single painting sums up what I do and what I like about the business the most. It's quirky, it's original, it's rare, it's weird, it's decorative, it's cool. It's got all the things I like. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and you. See you again. Yeah, OK. Cheers, bye-bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> It's been a long journey just for one painting, but Drew can't wait to share his find with the team back in Wales. Do you like it? That's a gem. I think it maybe ever so slightly yeah. out of scale. No, that's what's great about it. It's totally out of whack. It's completely out of scale. Perspectives, all wrong. Yeah. All wrong. Do you like it? Anybody like it? Hands up. Drew has encountered an interesting mix of sellers this week. But now it's time for the tables to turn as he takes the plate racks he bought in Buclew to one of his best customers. I'm down here in Brighton, so I'm coming to see Alex today uh, over in Kemp Town, which is only about a mile from the pier. I've got something that I know she's going to want on the back of the van. I've had this shop here now for five years. What I've come to understand is quite simple, really, which is that all I do is express myself through what I buy. Hi, Alex. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Oh. OK, Jules, watch that chandelier. Alex has been a favourite of mine as a dealer before I knew her. I was a little bit of hero worship for her, to be honest with you. Her look is so strong. What she does is so individual. Wow, lovely. What do you think? Nice size. I think Drew is um, what I see as being sort of salt of the earth, authentic dealers where you feel like you're getting something at source. Should we talk money? Um, yeah. I'll tell you what I'd like to pay. Yeah. 500 for the pair. 500 pounds. Yeah. That's giving me a little profit, a little, like a, a little profit. But that sounds good to me. No, and I know you're not going to shift, are you? I'd like 600 quid for the pair. Right. 550, you're not going to say, you're going to say no, aren't you? I'd be happier with five. And um, I know you like keeping your customers happy, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, regular customer, that's fine. I'd rather okay. you have them, to be honest with okay. you. Um, I've made a little bit, so that's fine. That's okay. fine. Not a huge profit, but Drew is happy to have passed such a unique item on to a dealer he respects. She's doing something with the antiques trade, which is very unusual and extremely hard to do, which is giving a totally fresh, modern perspective. It's special, it's simple, it's beautiful, using fabulous old antiques. That's hard to do, and she makes it look effortless. A couple of days later, and Drew's wife, Rebecca, is anticipating another new arrival to the shop, as the Morris Miner Drew bought in Coventry is delivered. Another car, um, I've lost count. I don't think there's ever going to be a cut-off point where Drew says, I've bought too many cars. But will Drew's weakness for this cute classic prove to be a good business decision? 500 yards down the road from our shop is a Morris Minor restorer, and then he is coming down to give me a price for the work on the car and to see if I bought it right in the first place. Hi, Dave. Hi, Drew. How are you doing? All right, mate. So? Yeah, well, you said it was a, a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> when I picked it up, I noticed there was a little bit more work than I'd initially thought. I was just excited when I first got it, you know. Well, the outer undersill has gone... The has riggers gone. have gone on it as well. Back chassis shot. It's had the gold seal engine. Yeah. So the chances are that that's, you know... It's done a load of miles. Yeah. I paid 800 quid for it. Right. I knew it was pretty ropey. If I'm going to pass it on, I need to be able to sell it a bit of a profit. Do you think I could stretch it to maybe get a grand for it as it stands, or...? Is that just way out? Um, yeah, to the right person and yeah. someone who may be, you know, willing to do some of the work themselves. I think I must have taken some hallucinogenics last time I looked at the Morris Minor because, unfortunately, it was slightly worse than I remember. It's what I expected. It needs an awful lot of work, and I'm hoping it will go to somebody who will restore it. I'll never sell it to somebody who's going to cut it up for parts. The dog I bought from Peter, I knew where that was going to go and what I did with it. As soon as I got it, I sent a photograph to one of my regular clients, an international 
antique dealer. We had a sale this morning of one of the items I bought while I was away. How long was it in the shop? About 32 seconds. Yeah, and they were Not sold. Long. Yeah, yeah, the full set of those unusual little pot jars. We doubled our money. That's fine. That's all right. The fabulous leather chair I bought from Golly. What I did with that, I have a not a standing order, but pretty much from a foreign interior designer for any chairs of that period, and he took it immediately. <laughs> you looked after if he bit you. <laughs> a week later, and Drew has sold the Coventry car. Today, new owner Dave, who renovates Morris Miners, arrives to collect his latest project. Here's me. There you go. Be prize and joy. <laughs> <laughs> And the price? £800 and 50 pence. 50 pence more than Drew paid for it back in Coventry. I'll soon get it back to A1 condition. Duke's and hazard. There's no real profit, but Drew's just glad to have saved another car from the scrapyard. I've made a bit of a loss on it, but yeah. I just know I don't care because I know yeah. you're going to save it. It'll be yeah, good. yeah. So well, that's but as soon as it's finished, I'll send you a couple of photographs. And yeah, posts. I'd love to see it. Yeah, because they always do that. Yeah. I always send a photograph off the finished car when I finish it. Oh, great. Well, yeah. I'd rather see it done and yeah. lose a few quid, and at least yeah. somebody's going to do something with yeah. it. So, no. look, thanks very much. Thanks, Drew. Cheers, All the best. Yeah. Thanks for okay, coming. Then. All Thank right. you. I love it when stuff sells quickly. It just makes it so much more fun. Sometimes it just isn't the money. It's finding out it goes somewhere you really didn't expect. It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. I didn't make any money on it. Well, there. 50p. 50p. That was it. So Not we... the best business deal I've ever done, to be perfectly honest with you. Can't even no. buy a bag of chips. No. No. And we can't return. No. <laughs> Not off the no. back of that one, no.